Any other questions before we turn it over to Governor Johnson? Um, 10 minutes? We'll give you 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Yeah. You keep playing the Hamilton musical. Alexander Hamilton started the first central bank, and you said yesterday you signed legislation to end it. What's with the, it seems like a mixed metaphor here. Boy, you got me on that one. <laughs> Guilty. I don't, <laughs> it had nothing to do with it. And even if I did, it. even if I did, I would have liked the music. So, you know, that's libertarian, huh? I mean, this libertarian. This is lighten up a little bit. This Sorry, is. Johnson, we were just discussing that the super PACs in the last few years have radically changed the, uh, the political landscape out there. Do you expect to run a different kind of campaign in seeking the money or in seeking support from, from organizations like that than you did in 2012? Well, one of the problems with a super PAC is, is that you don't know who it is. You don't know who it is, you don't know um, who's donated to it, and you don't have any control over it whatsoever. So there were a couple of super PACs that were behind me in 2012, and the stuff that they put out, oh, you know, my brother calls me up, he says, you flushed your brand, what are you doing? What are you thinking? And then, I don't know, five minutes later, he calls back. He goes, was that a super PAC? These were messages that he left. Yeah, it was a super PAC. Governor Johnson, since Matt Peavy is here, and do you expect to, to get uh, support from the Tea Party? Because uh, I know a lot of Tea Party members that they would not vote for Trump. Well, Tea Party, when the Tea Party was initially formed, uh, I identified myself as a Tea Party, which, a Tea Partier, which was really all about fiscal, being fiscally conservative. I mean, it was all about dollars and cents. I think the Tea Party has been co-opted by Republicans. It's now a social conservative organization further to the right, uh, maybe, than, so based on what I'm witnessing from the Tea Party, uh, hopefully if they are about, hopefully those Tea Party members that are still about smaller government, uh, yeah, here's a home. Right now you're just in the polls, it looks like you're taking more support from Hillary Clinton than you are from Donald Trump. Do you think it's possible that by running you could ensure that Donald Trump becomes top president of the United States? Well, uh, f first of all, uh, I've been in three national polls. But since I've been in those three national polls, there have probably been 40 other polls without my name in it. So really key for us is being in these polls. And at the end of the day, really, we poll from both sides. And uh, look, um, this is another voice at the table. It's arguably combining the best of what it is to be a Democrat and the best of what it is to be a Republican, neither of which actually do very well at what they're supposed to be good at. Uh, coming out of this convention, uh, look, I'm going to pose to people that most people are fiscally conservative, uh, socially liberal, tolerant, uh, and, and then the wars, the interventions. Uh, how about uh, some skeptic at the table when it comes to uh, these military interventions? How about involving Congress? You know that we have 69 treaties with foreign countries uh, that uh, have been uh, presidentially authorized and we have to defend their borders Congress isn't involved in any of those treaties that just doesn't seem right Governor, will you continue on with your candidacy if Bill Weld is not selected as VP? Uh, we'll have to cross that road when it when when it comes but I really do believe that uh, if if Bill Weld is not my vice presidential candidate, I, I don't think I will be elected president. I, I think that, uh, and that's not to take away from any of the other candidates that are on the stage, but really, don't we all look at the vice president first and foremost is, c can this be a person that would step in and actually take the role of vice president if something happened to the president? I think Bill Weld fills that in spades. What would you say to disaffected Republicans that are now leaving the party? Well, I think disaffected Republicans are really smaller government, and, and Bill Weld and myself, proven small government guys, um, Republicans that served in heavily Democrat states, both of us having gotten reelected, well, how do you do that if you're fiscally conservative? Well, we did that. Well, we did that because we also care about the social side of life. We also care about people's freedom and liberty and the ability for people to make their own decisions in their own lives, as long as those decisions don't adversely affect others. Are you going to make any direct reach out to the LGBT community and try and draw them either from the right or the left? You know, it's never been my tack to reach out to anybody. The message that I have is the same message no matter whom I'm addressing. And the most effective uh, reach out is just saying the things that should be said 
in that context, LBGT community should embrace what it is that we're saying. How do you answer to many foreign governments who worry if you uh, get to our allies, if you become president and the American will go back to isolationism? Look, I'm not about isolationism at all. I'm about diplomacy to the hilt, but uh, military interventions? Um, I can't think of an example where any of our military interventions, boots on the ground, dropping bombs, flying drones that kill thousands of innocent people, I can't think of any of those interventions that have actually made things wor uh, better, rather. Why is this year different? Well, in, uh, it really is different. In 2012, I mean, I've been asked this repeatedly. What, gosh, it's, you know, really, at the end of the day, Gary, uh, in 2012, you never really caught on. Well, going from zero in that 2012 cycle to 1.3 million votes, here was the trajectory, all right? Well, it really hasn't stopped since. And now when I'm in polls, and by the way, I wasn't in any polls in 2012, none. And yet the media would say, well, he's not showing any interest whatsoever. Well, when I was in polls, uh, at much lesser polls, actually there was quite a level of interest. Right now, leaving this convention, uh, if Bill Weld is uh, the vice presidential nominee, I just find it difficult uh, to be uh, excluded from these polls. And I would just ask all of you to report on that fact. It is a fact. I could see the Presidential Debate Commission in the fall saying, oh, look, they just uh, weren't polling that well, when the reality is, is that we weren't in any polls. I mean, that's the, that's, that's the rigged nature of this game. The Presidential Debate Commission is made up of Republicans and Democrats, and believe me, they have no interest whatsoever to see anybody else on stage. 50% of Americans right now are registering themselves as independent. Where's that? meaning new voters are registering themselves as independent. Where is that representation? Well, I happen to think it's libertarian. I happen to think most people in this country are libertarian. It's just that they don't know it. Here's the great opportunity leaving here today. Governor, last night in the debate, last night in the debate, you said you didn't want to comment on Trump, but then you went on to list a number of things about his policies that you think are just wrong. How can we, or what can we expect from you in terms of taking him on? In the well, general? taking him on on the, on the fact that he wants to deport 11 million illegal immigrants, taking him on on wanting to build a fence across the border, that's nuts. Taking him on when he says that Mexicans are murderers and rapists, when in, I mean, it's incendiary as a border state governor. It's incendiary to 50% of the population of New Mexico that he's talking about Hispanics, Mexicans in this way when the absolute opposite is true. Is that going to be a big part of your strategy? Absolutely. Though? Call him out on what is really r racist. It's just racist. Could you, could you speak to the uh, idea of getting another entity besides the uh, Presidential Debate Commission to host a debate? What are some of the challenges with getting a, like a news entity, Fox well, News? Here's, here's the challenge. The challenge is, is that the, the Democrats and Republicans sign documents, and this is part of our lawsuit against them, but they, they sign documents agreeing ahead of time that they will debate no one other than a Democrat or a Republican. It's a rigged game. No, they'll have no part of a third party unless it is decreed by the Presidential Debate Commission. Look, um, there's a legitimacy to having my name in the polls, and that is I'm going to be the only third party candidate on the ballot in all 50 states. Nobody else, nobody else is going to lay claim to that. Nobody else is going to come close. Uh, Donald Trump likes to challenge people to debates or, you know, one-on-ones. Would you challenge him to a debate? That's a possibility, but I'll just uh, I'll just reiterate. There is there is no advantage to him whatsoever to do that. I wouldn't expect him to do that. And uh, presidential debate commission. Look, they sign documents. They sign documents that say we'll only debate Democrats, Republicans. What about forums? You know these impromptu media things we see in Oh, that would again. That would be terrific. And yeah, we'll throw those kinds of bombs. But libertarians have been throwing those bombs forever since the start of this party, and nothing has resulted from those bombs. And Look, why, why would it change this time? Well, why it would change this time is really, um, this is a big alternative, and arguably we're talking about the two most polarizing figures in American politics that are, that are this is our choice for president. Would you, do you intend to reach out to Ted Cruz? Because he had to back Donald Trump. 
my, my um, I'll say it again. We just my my tact is not reaching out to anybody. My tact is if people, if Ted Cruz people want to reach out to me, which they have every reason to. I mean, every group has a reason to reach out to us. I think we're representative of every group, and that's the effective way to actually have support, as opposed to going on bended knee, if you will, because there's nothing bended knee about it. Final question. So yeah, you said you don't have to reach out to anybody, but what about Susanna Martinez? Uh, she kind of got pushed away by Trump or pushed herself away from Trump. What well, Susanna that? Martinez, governor of New Mexico, I mean, she took me on. I think she made a name for herself in New Mexico, taking me on on um, my, uh, my proposal to legalize marijuana. I mean, she made a name for herself being uh, anti-marijuana, and she does to this very day. Thank you, Governor Johnson. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you all. Um, we will likely have another availability that will be 10 minutes after the vice presidential nominee is selected and after we adjourn or we take a recess at that time.